Now look what it has done. Huh? Automatically it has gone through, it has analyzed all this thing. And then it has annotated also saying where it is coming from. Huh? And then it goes on to give me a narration of this. And then it does a performance analysis. It gives me a conclusion of that. So I was not happy with this. So I asked it that, could you please qualify the performance analysis with numbers? Because it is talking about, you know, Apple has maintained robust sales and with, so in many words, people would say, Gyan, so instead of that, I asked, it, can you give me some, qualify these with numbers? It rewrites the whole narration and this is within seconds. Huh? And it tells me what is its analysis and then it gives me a conclusion. So on profitability, it tells me what is the uh, increase in net income. And it tells me, use this words like, you know, liabilities management and stuff like that. A slight decrease in low total liabilities suggests that effective liabilities management. Now, one thing we have to note is that this might not be always correct, but we will come to that. So then it gives me a conclusion saying, what is the... Uh, what is its conclusion on the quarterly result of Apple? So this is just one of the activities I just wanted to show you. We will discuss on that a bit more detail because our goal is not to learn chat GPT, but to tell what, how it would influence your job and therefore what you should be doing even after you have got, you've gotten your job and what kind of jobs you should be looking for and how you should be prepared for that. Second, I made it prepare a trial balance. Huh? Now, I like playing around with things and you know, uh, trying to fiddle around and see if things break or something like that. So I made a TB, I called a spreadsheet like this. I made a, a called it tb.xlsx. And what I did is that, uh, I think this is the one that I prepared. What I did is that I didn't include this column. Huh? I didn't include this column. And I just load uploaded this document, this part only. This was not there in that original file that I uploaded. So I said that, can you please prepare a trial balance from the attached Excel file? It looks at this and says that, you know, it has description and amount. And it says that, however, the data doesn't specify the nature of each account, whether it's an asset liability, etc., which is essential for determining. So it is behaving like a human being. Huh? And say that, could you please provide me additional information on the classification of each item in that sense. So, and what is happening is that this is all done using code. And if you click here, you can see what is happening behind it. It is writing its own code. And then it is trying to figure out what is the analysis that it has to do. So then I say that, okay, I upload the one with the transaction type. I've put type there and I've just put some things. Obviously, some of these things are completely wrong. The classification is not correct. So I have made a wrong classification. Some are correct, some are wrong. I've made this and then uploaded it. Huh? I hope you can, everybody can see this file set that I'm showing you. Okay. Now I upload this and it says that, now it says that in the type column and it starts preparing a trial balance. Huh? What it does is that it automatically prepares all these things. And then it figures out that it doesn't balance. Obviously, it won't balance because I've given some of the entries as wrong entries. Okay. And it figures out that please note that in the uh, in a balanced trial balance, the total debit and credit should be equal. The difference here suggests that there might be an error in the classification of the accounts or in the amounts. So this is not a simple program or, you know, some error message that it is coming. It is conversational. You can ask things to it and then, you know, it maintains the context also. Like you might have used it, but I just wanted to show you what all are possible. So then I say that, can you please check? And it says that you may need to correct. So it says that, you know, can you give me the correct? Uh, there might be differences in the error in classifications. You might need to review the entries. I'm very lazy and I said that, can you please check and tell me which are the entries that could be wrongly classified? Then it starts classifying the entries and it does its work there in classifying the entries. And so I said that reclassifying these entries appropriately might bring the trial balance closer to the balance. Would you like me to make adjustments and recalculate? I said, yes, please. While you do so, please add a note 
in the next column stating that you have reclassified the particular entry and generate an XLSX for the TB. Now, look at the way I'm communicating. I have not told it that TB stands for trial balance. It has figured it out. I have reclassified the entries. It has reclassified all these entries, but there is still a difference here. When it says that I have saved this trial balance in an XLSX file, you can download it using the following link. So I just need to download this XLSX file here. And uh, this is the one that it has given me. Okay, it still doesn't match. There is a problem with it. So I go back and it says, that, thanks, can you check what are the other errors that are there? So it checks some of these errors and all that. And it, long story short, it verifies everything and then tells me that there are some errors that you might need to do manual review process for identifying and correcting the errors in the TB. Then I said that, look, I went through your Excel file and I said that, why have you classified drawings to equity? Said so by drawings, I mean it's a technical uh, drawings purchased by the company which forms an asset for the company. Don't you think so? It does a reclass again and it says that now it's happy, it matches. And then it gives me, without asking, it gives me the updated trial balance. So what I wanted to show you here, and this is just one of the examples. Huh? And I can I have also worked on giving it complex, uh, complex scenarios uh, also to this kind of a tool and asked it really complex questions, which involves, you know, employee benefits. I've made a case study, which involves employee benefits. There are questions on that. It has to do some actuarial valuation and all that. It does it wonderfully well. There might be errors. There are issues like you saw, you know, I had to prompt it and prod it, but you have to remember one thing. This is just two years old. Huh? It is not, uh, it is a very young, uh, tool that is there. It was released in September 2021 and it has come this far. But then all this is fine. What does this mean for us? What it means for us, for you specifically, those of you who are very young and looking forward for a career, my career, I'm moving more into retirement age uh, rather than uh, looking for a new employment. So my, I have, I don't have that problem, but uh, what you need to think about is that a lot of traditional jobs will cease to exist. And there is always care that jobs will go away, people will be jobless, they won't be doing anything, they'll be sitting in the beach or somewhere and sipping pineapple juice or pina colada or whatever. You know, but there's a small difference that it might not happen in that form. But what we need to do is that, or what we need to understand is that what AI human collaboration can give us it will give us a few things. One is that it will help us to achieve more with less resources. Now, what happens? Let's take an example. You know, if you have an internal audit team that does typically, typically all internal audit teams, they take a certain target. They take a target saying that we will do 75 audits or 100 audits in a year and along these, these areas. Okay. And the number of staff would be 20, 30, 40, 50 or whatever. And this applies, I'm just taking the case of internal audit. It can be for stat audit or any of the other uh, cases also. Now, the thing is that I can take only 75 audits because I have a certain number of staff that I have in my uh, team. What if I had a lot more staff, I could take more audits, right? Now, what this enables, this kind of a technology enables is that you can take X times, you know, three times, four times, five times, 10 times, multiples of audits that can be done with the same stuff. So now instead of having junior auditors, you have these AI tools that can do your junior auditors role. And the junior auditors need to scale up to become one level above. That is, they need to know how to work with AI. So if you were the, the lowest person in the hierarchy who had to do all the manual work, good news for you is that you don't have to do that. The challenge for you is that you have to think you are now going to be treated like a grown up. So you have to be thinking from a higher plane point of view. So which means the, it shifts the value of our work one step upwards. So what you are doing today as a transactional job that moves one level up. When that happens, you improve the speed and output of your 
jobs. If it is audit, the number of audits, the speed at which you can finish the audits, the number of amount of time that it takes to analyze the data, to create reports, for example, all these are done very fast. And therefore, what happens is that the speed of business also improves and your response to certain business situations also improve. Now, this is a, this is a thing that you can take and you know, take it to any uh, other part of finance and accounting world also from the examples that I showed you. So this is the world that we are entering into. So that is the context that I wanted to set that before we ask the question, what do we need to do today? From what do you need to do today? And here I had the four points that I had mentioned here that one is that no, we have to move from just in case learning to just in time learning. So you will not have time to learn. Uh, you will have you will not have time to learn. You have to learn very very fast. I'll give you an example of just in case learning model. Just in case learning model is uh, a x square plus b x plus c equal to zero root of quadratic equation, you would have studied, right? X equal to what? Minus B plus or minus square root of B square minus 4AC by 2A, right? We have memorized all these things. A plus B the whole square equal to A square plus 2AB plus B square. We don't know why we will use that ever in our life again, but we have learned and memorized these things. Why do we learn that? Because just in case somebody asks us, what is the square root? What is the root of a quadratic equation? You should know. What is a square minus b square? You should immediately be able to say a plus b into a minus b, correct? That's why we have learned all these things. And I can tell you that I have worked for about what about 25 to 30 years now in the industry. And I can tell you I've never had to use that. Neither of these equations that I've studied, I've never had to use it. So there's a lot of things that we carry in our bag. Huh? It is like when you go for a holiday or when you go for a trap trip, huh? you will carry everything more than what is required. Huh? So we do the same thing to our head also. We carry a lot of things in our head. So the idea is to load our memory with so much information that we can, if somebody asks, we'll be able to tell you that, you know, if somebody asks me, what is the, what the section 80 IA in income tax act stand, then I can immediately say it's for infrastructure uh, uh, projects, correct? So like that, I should know all these things by heart, but that has moved into knowing. So remembering and memory, Remembering these things have slowly become obsolete and you know that already. You don't remember the phone number of every phone a friend of yours, right? One or two people you might remember. I know people who don't remember their own phone number also. So memorizing things are going. So what will need to happen is that you will need to understand the concepts faster. And that's why I'll take you to the last part when I discuss towards the last part, how to face technical interviews. You should be aware of that. Okay. The second part is that we have to get out of this kunji model. You know, we have a kunji model in India. Kunji in Hindi means key or chabi or key guide, which is there. No? So for any exam, you have a kunji and you can pass with that. So if you want to uh, study for JEE, then you go to a particular coaching institute. They will give you these many question papers and you will pass. There is a key for all these things. Same goes for all our exams, right? So that... The problem is that we draw, we draw lines that this is in syllabus, this is out of syllabus. It has happened to us, right? When we come back, I mean, I have also done, I've done that many times. I mean, questions came, that came were out of syllabus. It was so annoying. We were upset. How can they ask questions out of syllabus? Correct. The problem is that now, once you start working, everything is in syllabus. There is nothing out of syllabus. So, which means you have to learn everything. And I'll discuss more on that when we come. Third is that reflect on what is the value that you are adding to a transaction. Because if what you are doing was just preparing tri trial balance, I've shown you that it can be automated completely. If all you are doing was just looking at the, uh, if you were looking at the uh, financial statements and preparing ratios or summary of the financial statements in a small, in a one page summary of it, that's also automated. It can do that. So your knowing current asset minus current liability equal to working capital or, you know, whatever your ROC equal to EBIT by uh, capital employed. Therefore, capital employed is equal to net worth plus uh, what? Net worth plus 
long term liability correct so you know you don't have to memorize all these things so you have but then what do you do if that is what you've learned what do you do you have to think where do you add the value so which means you have to go deeper inside that now unfortunately for you you are in this part where the direction is changing so you will feel some of the pain where you will need to know a little bit but at the same time you know you will become obsolete also this knowing will become obsolete in short time doing a quick time check five more minutes but therefore how do you add value you add value by understanding the business you are in if you are working with an fmcg company you need to know everything about fmcg company if you are working in a company that manufactures cereals or soap or shampoo you need to know how is a shampoo produced what is the supply chain how is a shampoo produced what are the raw materials that go into it what is the process that go into it how is it how does it come out of the factory and after the factory how does it reach the customer consumer every part of the transaction you should know similarly if it is an it business you should know how it projects work if it's if you are in technology business if you are in a company that makes printers you should know about that technology that particular area also unfortunately if you are looking for jobs elsewhere also which you will keep looking you will need to understand have a wider perspective of the different technology areas as well so therefore the point is that you don't have all that all that much time also that's what the point is that how quickly can you understand the business you are in and where you want to potentially be in what are the levers for profitability what are the revenue opportunities what are the growth opportunities how do you optimize your processes oops hello yes narendra i am i don't know <laughs> yeah certainly my screen, screen is visible yeah yeah it's there yeah so this is the thought process i wanted to start with oops okay this is the thought process that i want to start with before we go into building your resume honestly building your resume is a easier part because you know today you have these tools like chat gpt and bard which are available for free completely for free there are many other tools that are also available so that will help you also but again go back and say what is the value that you are adding because you can't rely on chat gpt to do the interview also for you so that is not happening anytime soon huh? you can't say that chat gpt will do the interview for me anyways coming back to coming to the point so quick check we are at 6:30 now next how do we go about building the resume so i'll take about 15 to 20 minutes at max on this one first part is a structure and you know before i start even talking about the resume essentials if there are questions please do put in the chat window i'll address that as and when we keep on uh, proceeding from time to time i'll get in and address those questions that you have on this put the questions in the chat window okay so before we get into the structure or what is the content in the resume you have to treat resume as if it is your white shirt that you are wearing for an important function you cannot have dirt specks on that right it has to be like you no know, nirma or surf excel se dhula hua it has to be sparkling white so the resume everything has to be correct you cannot have mistakes in your resume structure it has to look beautiful it has to be spaced out correctly and it should have enough information for people so this is just the first part is just the hygiene part of it you don't want to go into a restaurant that looks dirty right or eat from a place which is dirty you would like to go to a place which is clean so same thing happens for your resume as well and also it is a reflection of your mind so first you start with your name contact information phone email linkedin make sure that your phone whichever you are giving is working email is also working it is not these are things that i have seen in the past where people have given for shared wrong phone numbers okay and email when they write they might make a mistake in the name of the email address which can be instead of gmail.com they might give something else and then it becomes a problem so make sure that this is correct it's a reflection of yourself so it has to be as smart as possible a brief professional summary 
what is it that you have done then comes the educational qualification then your articleship experience if you have more than one firms where you have done articleship or you have done articleship and an industrial training mention that clearly in this order skills and certification and thereafter additional sections which are there now why do we want to put it in this way because first is that when i am looking at the person the name comes first i'll be hunting around the resume if you think of yourself as an interviewer the first thing you look as a, okay i want to look at the name and i expect that the name will be on top and then when you go to the next one i want to know what is the a brief of your professional summary this is also your two moments of sunshine now if it is articulated well it creates a very good impression right some many of the films that you see right it is the starting when the starting line is very catchy or the it gets you glued to the movie same thing happens here third most third again not in terms of third most important but very important part is your educational qualifications what is it that you've done how much you have scored what are the groups that you have taken just mention a summary of that now this gives a very important view of your academic consistency or how you have done and all that article check article ship experience in the case of chartered accountants this is the most critical thing how you have done what have you done in your article ship and we'll come to that bit more detail skills and certifications and if you have taken any certifications and any other awards that you have got or projects that you have taken voluntary experience and all that comes towards the last this is a basic structure moving on oops make sure that the formatting is clear it's laid out appealing as in the name should be of a bigger font there can be a line before the, below that there are many for, formats that you can see my advice is that don't put too much color into into the resume because most people uh, they might I mean especially second round interviews and all that people take print outs of that yeah some people do that so it's better to have a, a resume which is doesn't have too many distractions for example don't put pie charts and all those things in the resume some people in linkedin might say that but generally in the finance community i have seen that people prefer to have a resume which is to the point and what is the matter rather than distracting things like a bar chart or a pie chart or some graphics inside that consistent font size and style make sure that all the fonts are of the same thing example if it is arial size should be proper times new roman or whatever all the structure part that i told you about make sure that the headings are clear and the subheadings are clear and the content has to be action oriented which will go to the content section next now each section of your job na this is a pain also i know you will have to tailor it to the target job or the industry that you are getting into so if you are as a chartered accountant you might be applying for let's say a audit firm or a company like wipro enterprises which is a fmcg engineering company or wipro limited which is an it services company or it could be a different uh, a pharma company or any of those companies that are there so just make sure that the the sections are tailored to the particular company that you are appearing for the industry that you are appearing for why do we do that i am not telling that you should lie or you should dress it in a different manner the reason is that if i am coming from an fmcg company and reviewing a resume i would like to have some familiarity with it right so you know when uh, earlier deepak ji asked to uh, put your uh, put where you are from i saw there were many people from ujjain bhopal indore guna and so on right so what happens typically when we see that if i am from guna or i know somebody from guna, ah this person is from guna i know yeah there is some familiarity that comes right so familiarity is very important for people human beings we love to know people from each other you will do that right when you come to bangalore or you go somewhere else let's say you travel abroad and you see somebody from your place let's say ujjain or indore you would say where are you from i am from this place say, oh uh, i am also from that state which place which city in that state i am from indore oh you are i am also from indore right you see you might have seen those conversations happening sometime and finally see indore mein kaha 
uh, where is where where are you staying in indore which school did you go to and all that because there are common shared values that you have right indore is one of the cleanest cities in the in india so you know you have certain things that you are proud of and certain things you might not be proud of or whatever your shared values are there about that so something that is there that as an interviewer can relate to this is why you have to tailor this next quantify achievements with number and data without number and data makes no sense i came seventh in the race how many people ran with me seven people ran not good enough information right if 200 people ran and i came seventh then you would say okay not bad right so that numbers give a certain depth to the information that you are providing third is something we have to be as indians we have to be careful about is that using strong action words we are used to uh, speak uh, writing in passive uh, voice if you have forgotten what is active voice and passive voice go ahead and look into google and find out or chat gpt or you know bard and figure out what is active voice passive voice action oriented verbs action shows that you know you are enthusiastic you are not sitting dull like this at ha huh, you tell me and all that if you are dull then people don't want to engage with you so it has your words that you use here should have action verbs now in case you're thinking of you know what is an action verb means demonstrated demonstrated capability in a b c d area or whatever you know you can say that this is what i have done and when you quantify it with number and with an action word it appears to be much more stronger now in case you are struggling with this because for most of us english is not our mother tongue we don't speak english as our first language correct so you can write whatever you want and then ask an ai tool to change it or modify it for you once you've done that proofread very carefully for grammatical and grammar and spelling mis mistakes that can come in grammatical mistakes are very bad spelling mistakes are even worse okay so this is the few basic rules that you to follow for the content how do you create a powerful resume you know briefly summarize your skills experience and career goals one second yeah highlight your key strengths and what are relevant to the target job huh? so what you do here is that when you are typing in this now whatever is your target job write a few examples there what are the key strengths i have given it towards the later part of the ppt and uh, i'll share the ppt with deepak ji if i mean you can take this if you think it is worthwhile i'll be very happy to share the ppt i'll anyway send it to deepak ji you can take it from him okay so write down what are the examples that will come which will be your key strengths relevant to the target job is it detail orientation is it uh, analytical reasoning capability ability to go in depth all those things come in here what are your key strengths for the target job quantify your achievements to grab attention you know if you say that streamlined xyz process saving so many percentage in person hours or so many so make it relative and make it quantifiable quantified stuff information and tailor the summary for each job application you have to do this because it makes a lot of sense to make it relatable to people who are interviewing you there are three questions i see on the chat window yeah i'll i'll come to i'll come to the questions uh, the uh, two questions there at the uh, afterwards so the first question that that was put in the chat window is that how do i how do we tailor it for example for say how having done internship in a particular industry we want to switch to another how to create a familiarity in the resume with that industry see it is not about the change your article ship experience in such a way but think of it that if let us say that you have maybe you have done only tax audit let us say gst filing then gst you have helped in gst audit if that is the case thing that you have done then when you write it you put it in such a way that it is if you are let's say you are appearing for an it services company what kind of issues would they face in a gst 
maybe you should talk about if it's an IT services industry, most likely it will be an export industry. So zero rated supply, what kind of zero rated supplies have you worked on? LUTs you have done, what are the issues that you have seen and any of the IDT issues that are there? So, you know, you can bring in those elements there. So the point of tailoring is that you really have to think what is the job that is there that they are offering? How do you, how do you, what is the work that you have done is related? Because one more thing is that Laiba is that, you know, uh, when, when I'm interviewing for a potential person for, uh, for my company, na, I know that the person is not ready-made. Na? I accept that because in the campus, I'm coming to the campus to hire people who are not ready-made. So that is okay. But what I want to know is that what are the good things that you have brought with you? What are the strengths that you have? And that is what I'm looking for. And that is what I mean by tailoring also, so that you can, that I can understand what you are saying. Okay. So showcasing your articleship experience in the reverse chronological order is how you list your articleship firms, which means the starting with the newest one in the beginning and the oldest one towards the end. The second part is mention specific responsibilities and projects that were handled. Here is again where you can tailor it to the industry that you're talking about. If you have done something, think of it for a moment that if you are coming from a manufacturing company, what would that person be looking for? What would that person's experience be? That finance person who's coming to interview you, what is that person's experience going to be? Most likely that person will ask questions in that regard. So therefore, what is the work that you have done that can take you there? If it is just not possible, no need to forcefully tailor it. But what I'm saying is that most of you would have similar articleship experience. So try to see where it is relatable to the particular industry that's coming from. Quantify results and achievement. Again, as I mentioned earlier, and keywords from job description to demonstrate relevant skills. I'll come to this th fourth point a later bit when we just close on the resume part. Huh? Uh, what are the soft skills that are re relevant to a CA profession? One is that detail orientation. Mix it with hard skills. You know, what is your area of specialization, which is the area that you are, you are thorough in and what are your soft skills that are there? And when you say soft skill, like communication or teamwork, huh? Communication, people don't expect you to stand up on the stage and speak like uh, a, a great orator or a great business leader. Huh? But what they are looking for is that, give you an example of communication. Can you communicate your point of view in a very short sentence? Can you make that point hard hitting and clear? Can you write audit reports in a clear and concise manner? That is about communication. So when you say communication, you can think of it in that way, not just spoken communication. Huh? Teamwork. How do you work together in a team, especially in audit scenarios, so that the, the end goal is achieved faster by collaborating together. So those are the examples that you have to give in soft skills. Also. If you have taken any certification or training programs, mention that. But back up your skills with examples from your experience, huh? like the ones I mentioned here. But just keep this in mind. I'll come back to some of these points towards the end. Whatever extra work that you have done, mention that your proficiency in additional languages, volunteering activities, any awards or sports achievements or anything that you've got, put it towards the end. When you are mentioning your hobbies, do not put things like uh, surfing the net, watching Netflix or listening to music and those kind of stuff. Huh? Because that is not a hobby. Your hobby can be, you know, watching football is not a hobby. But playing football can be a hobby. So that, see the difference there. So watching football is inactive. You're just sitting there with a the remote and uh, clicking and seeing the match, right? Whereas... I mean, I'm just putting it in a certain way, but there are people who also do statistical analysis of football matches. I'm not talking about that, but generally when you mean by listening to music, these are all inactive. But if you play a guitar, it is very different from playing a guitar versus listening to a guitar. 
so the second part is action listening is not a great action so that is what you need to keep in mind when you do that again just to summarize tailor your resume for each job application use keywords if it is not possible leave it at that but try to see what you can tailor it keep it concise ideally one page if it's just not possible go into two pages but people prefer one page resumes proof read carefully before submitting what you should not do or you should not put in is include irrelevant information or personal details which are not relevant or making generic statements in the resume anything that you cannot stand up to and speak to or exaggerating your experience or put in a poorly formatted resume or unprofessional resume and professional i mean you know which has grammatical mistakes in it which has uh, spelling mistakes in it and all that now why would you want to do all these things that is because you want to prepare for the interview now if you go back to the points that i have mentioned what this helps you the structure think of it from a psychological point of view what goes on in the mind of a interviewer huh it is actually directing you directing you can actually direct the interviewer in the way you want the questions to be asked if you write the resume properly huh because think of it if i am the interviewer i passed i didn't pass chartered accountancy so i mean typically the person who will be interviewing you would be a chartered accountant so but let's say i am just masquerading as a ca i passed ca long time back 25 years 30 years back i have no idea if i take the exam again i definitely will not pass most people tell me that okay now so what do i want to know from you i have questions i am expert in my area i have seen many transactions that i have gone through but i am not thorough with your syllabus therefore but and you have a syllabus that is whole lot i can ask you questions from anywhere you might have left a particular section as an uh, say particular standard as an uh, you know option you might have kept it as an optional thing so but i can ask you questions on that so how do you how do you defend yourself is by putting the resume in such a way where you describe your the formatting with the with the clear heading and subheadings concise action oriented content and also guiding it in the right way therefore when you write your article ship summary here now or you mention your key strengths and all that and you bold it and you make your achievements what happens is that my eyes are drawn towards that area and then i will ask you questions on that so it is in some way manipulating the interviewer to ask you questions that you are comfortable with in answering or the area that you are comfortable with so if you say that financial reporting is your strength try to bring it out in that way so that people can ask you your article ship experience whichever part you have handled once you bring it out in the way that uh, you are the area bring it out in the way that you know you talk about the area that you are confident in answering questions now what happens is that when i see your resume i look at these highlighted points that are there i read your resume i read look at your article ship exam. okay can you tell me about maybe auditing standards i can quiz you on auditing standards if you have had all experiences in audit if you have experiences in indirect taxes then i can quiz you on that particular topic correct so this is the way the mindset of the interviewer works while interviewing and this is how you can guide the person the interviewer to ask the questions that in an area that you are comfortable with therefore writing your resume in this order is of paramount importance for preparing your interview for the interview okay okay i'll just look at the questions it's a it's a one uh, problem in speaking in english uh, see uh, it is a difficult one to uh, judge here because it depends um, it it limits your the companies that you can apply to many interview so in the interview you will be expected to speak in english not in hindi or in any other vernacular language huh? you will be expected to do that that is the unfortunate truth here but what i have seen is that i have seen in the past candidates who are not speaking queens english but were confident and had a conviction 
and they had the content they have been selected i have seen at least two or three candidates who have got selected i mean in my experience i've who were who were finding it very difficult to speak english but this girl still spoke huh she spoke and she said that no i will speak in english in the interview and she said why she could not speak and she explained that and the interviewers were so impressed with her and said that no i want this girl in the team and she's still working in wipro for us and she's done remarkably well after coming there so it is that also huh nobody expects you to speak flawless english but give it your best shot the good news is that you still have time you know you st- the interview is still at least 2 to 3 months away from now I mean, two months away from now so you have time for that chira so please do prepare like that uh you can mention ongoing courses certification courses bhavana but uh, you should mention how much you have progressed what is it that you where you have reached cooking is definitely a hobby that you can mention uh, but be specific what do you cook if you say that you are cooking maggi or omelet then it becomes a or toast then it is a it is, you know that it is not the you can't classify it as cooking but if you can cook something which is a specific cuisine let us say from uh, let's say some a particular uh, uh, maharashtrian cuisine or something like that then it is interesting what kind of cooking or if it is baking for example also qualify it let let it not be a very plain simple thing as don't make it uh don't make it like this dil hai chhota sa choti si aasha the song na put it put some jazz into it also what exactly you are cooking huh? what you are specializing in okay. is it relevant to mention these usual hobbies like no, no definitely you should mention that and uh, i have had people also because it gives a certain impression about the person because i'll tell you again what we are looking for is not just people who are expert in accounting we want people who can mold and change themselves and adapt to the business situation that we are in and therefore anything other than curricular activities also that you bring in is definitely appreciated but at the same time it cannot be at the cost of your uh, technical expertise uh i am not sure of the full form bhavna of ats uh i'm not sure i i'm so sorry for that then it's applicant tracking system the ats software okay okay, okay, okay. people so, have started using this lingo to market themselves on linkedin saying that we will help you prepare ats friendly resumes so that's what yeah yeah, yeah. so you know some companies do that they have an automated system for tracking and it became a bit of a controversy also because of the biases that it had generated also because <clears throat> what it used to do was that it used to track based on a certain uh, type of it would profile the candidate and then say that this candidate is more suitable for this job it bombed on people on the particular company that pioneered it it bombed on them big time and they had to pull it back so while the ats is still while the application tracking system is still used what i talked about is still ats friendly in that way it is still ats friendly if you are able to bring the whatever your strengths are whatever the areas that you are confident in answering if you highlight that properly then it automatically becomes friendly from that point of view but you know profiling of these using artificial intelligence tools that are were there available in the market few years back that has not worked out really well but new tools are there which do that uh yeah so i would suggest that you know the strength of your cv is your strength demonstrated in your cv is it allowed to ask who will take our interview so that we can you no know, priya you cannot ask you will not know also who will take your interview uh we can uh, you can ask the name of the person or you can ask them what is there but towards the end because you know you are being interviewed you are not interviewing them when they ask give you an opportunity to ask questions you can definitely be ask those questions what they are doing who are they what is their role and all that and that shows curiosity also but there's a f- fine line don't be of uh, be very careful on how you frame the questions and ask also huh? 
we worked in an yeah. org and from that org if we didn't receive a relieving letter from them then the experience should be ignored see uh, there are two things one is that uh, relieving letter many companies what they do is that they do the background verification based on your relieving letter as well as your pay slips so these two things are important in absence of pay slip they might ask you for your bank account statements also because many different co- companies work in different way but relieving letter if you don't have if you can substantiate the problem is if you can substantiate that you actually work there this is the work that you did and this is the remuneration you got you can have a discussion with the hr so it is not at the resume stage you can tell tell that because you are not lying in that case so it has happened in the past where the person didn't have a relieving letter but the person had could substantiate with pay slips and the bank statements and and uh, the candidate was accepted i've completed sir, the article yeah hello yeah, yeah. so just yeah. one query sir i want to know the actual uh, selection process that a company follows sir because for a single job application we might receive thousands of application how the actual selection of a particular uh, I'll candidate come i'll come to that i'll come to that towards the end i'll just come to that when we okay. talk about the interview a complete article from different domain and uh, go for a go for job for completely different domain and how can the article ship experience which is required for such a job uh, let me take a step back and say what is article ship experience uh, how what is the value of the article ship experience in a company like it could be any of the companies that are there see whether you did tax returns filing in your uh, article ship or you did statutory audit it doesn't matter really because you are starting from the beginning line now so therefore it doesn't really matter so much in terms of what is the article ship experience you have had in the past it will give you some familiarity so so does that mean that article ship experience is irrelevant absolutely not it on the converse what it does is that it brings in a certain rigor and detail orientation that an ordinary college graduate doesn't have so and i've seen that in my team where i had both chartered accountants and uh, bcom graduates and who came from college and all that so the detail orientation the rigor with which a person would go through a particular job the you know the patience level is all built in during the article ship experience and that is what is valued in the organization which is why many companies would not accept you if you have a article if you have done a dummy article ship I mean, if they find out they will not take a, uh, take you at all for that because it is valued because of this you have worked in a certain setup you know what it means to do a certain uh, activity on time deliver on time and you have some amount of practical experience now can would you be doing but if you let us say that if the same experience is what you are going to continue doing all throughout it will not be the case huh? let us say that you are specializing in a, in a particular domain let's say you're doing a, a, a specializing in direct taxes now for a first few years you might be doing that direct taxes but then you realize that suddenly direct taxes is not just india tax it can be cross border taxation the moment you talk about cross border taxation it can go into beps or un model or us uh, taxation rules that are there which are very very different then you have to understand treaties so you know your your experience itself will keep on shifting you you will need to keep on learning and unlearning and relearning all the time so therefore your article ship experience is a starting point it is just a booster pack that you get to get you started and get you, it's like a warm up exercise that you do before getting into the main race so that is why it is very relevant i mean we value it a lot at least in wipro we value article ship experience a lot and i'm sure in other companies also few other companies that i work absolutely uh, nikhil uh, you know solving a rubik's cube cube blindfolded is uh, impressive and definitely impressive i had a uh, a, a, a friend uh, a person in my team who was a chartered accountant and uh, and now he's an expert programmer as well he's uh, he teaches python programming to chartered accountants in different companies uh, he was also an expert in uh, solving rubik's cube so when you mentioned rubik's cube uh, i remember mohit uh sneha i would not say reading a newspaper can be a hobby reading a newspaper is expected 
for you to be so why do you read a newspaper reading a newspaper gives you two things one is that you read and you improve your vocabulary you improve your english uh, or your hindi or whatever language that you are reading the newspaper in second is that it makes you more aware of current affairs that is why you read the newspaper right so i would not say reading the newspaper current affairs would be a better way to mention that and say what area in current affairs because newspaper has different columns newspaper can have columns which can have editorials which is an opinion which is a written opinion so it could be you know at some point in time you might want to write that it could have comic strip also columns or sports column it has politics it has technology all those things right so which is the area that you are talking about so that is how i would put if i were to take a uh, newspaper uh, if my if i am a avid reader of a news of newspapers uh then up uh, typically people won't uh, people won't tell you what is the feedback at the interview and some people might tell you but it really depends on the on the uh, interviewer because uh, some people might hesitate to tell you that what is the to give you an honest feedback but some people might so there is no harm in asking for it <coughs> but internally you will know huh the first question that you are asked and how you take off and how many times you have said i don't know i don't know and when you are getting into a soup you would know and at some point in time there will be a tipping point where the battle is lost or won so you would know already the feedback of the interview towards the end towards the end you will have some intuitively you will know that but no harm in asking that again uh, i would say that depending upon the depending upon the uh, interviewer or the how the interview goes you might want to ask the feedback because these are all human beings that we are talking about so they don't go by set rules that are there right uh there is a discussion bhavna on the name of organizations uh ideally i wouldn't put it because the companies that you audited you can avoid that by see i i would say that uh in fact this question came out a year and a half back if i'm not mistaken when we were discussing this and uh deepak sir and i had a we had a con conversation on this so i would say that to err on the right side you say that a large steel rolling mill or something qualified in that manner so that it is not uh, people don't take offense to that so it is better to do that and some amount of client confidentiality is also maintained sir i would just like to add and i also recall this conversation which we had earlier Yeah. Sometimes, like uh, what happens is when you say a private limited company, but unless you give some numbers, a private limited company may have a car turnover of five or five thousand crores also. So, uh, some number or something should be tempting enough for the interviewer to ask that what you did in this company. And uh, I also checked at my end also with certain senior members in the profession. They said mentioning the name of the company is not a problem. It's not a breach of confidentiality. but the problem is if you start giving those intricate details of the right. people involved and the company what went wrong then it becomes a ethics issue so mentioning i worked for abc limited is fine let's say for example if i worked for unilever so it would be good for me to mention that worked with the control assurance division of unilevers so then the interviewer may come back and ask what did you do in this so that's a tempting point to bring them but not to divulge all the financial details correct correct in fact this happened once in one of the interviews where uh, there was this girl we were interviewing she was working with a particular bank and they had gotten into a issue with another company a very well known company and unfortunately in the interview she divulged certain information and hr took an objection to that because there were some cases being filed of bankruptcy being filed and all that so there were some issues that came out so you know so that so it uh, so again like you said it is better to give some indicative things but uh, keep a i mean make sure that your ethics are in place so that you don't divulge anything which is not publicly available information okay uh so uh, siddhi uh, you mentioned that it is you don't have a rich art it is not out of context because many people don't have a rich articleship experience huh? but with uh, at least they think they don't have a rich articleship experience so what i would suggest is that 
you know, depending upon the particular experience that you have had in article ship. So I'll give you one example. I had a, I have a, one of my team members who joined my team long time back in 2013, I think, 2012, I think. A, a fantastic guy. Uh, his article ship experience was very bad. He was actually working like an office boy. You know, going and buy, bringing tea and stuff like that. Poor, poor, I mean, but he did it very diligently. But what happened is that whatever work they did, no, he did. Whatever work that he did, he explained, he understood the context of it and he was able to explain it in a detailed manner. I'll give you an example from, uh, this is something I have not spoken outside at all. Uh, and but now it is all these things are be behind me, so I can speak about it. You know, it is not about what you do; it is about how you do it that matters. Huh? So I was a pretty senior person in Wipro at one point in time, and uh, we had a meeting with, uh, and we had to we were organizing a conference, finance conference, and uh, we were all supposed to go to a particular place and have that. Now the problem is that everybody was busy and we didn't have a uh, we didn't have a uh, we had somebody had to do and go and do a recce recce is just to go and see and recognize and see the place and give up and say whether it is good or bad now what happened is that in that meeting that was there i was the junior most person in that meeting uh, and uh, you know what happened is that it, i had to go and do the recce was it my boss was very was a bit uh, he didn't like telling me that you know you have that you have to go and do that but eventually it fell on me but what i did was that when i went and did the recce what i did is that i prepared a report which was as serious as any of the valuation report that i would have prepared for a acquisition i put it in that order and the same level of commitment i had shown there and it was just that you know i had to do it like that that was how i was trained it was not that I had something and said, yeah, this is, I'm anyway going to do it, but I, when I'm doing it, I'll do a good job. What happened interestingly was that after that, when he, my boss saw the report, his respect for me went up really high. I didn't expect it, honestly. I didn't do that out of expectation or anything of that sort, but his respect suddenly went up and that changed so much between the relationship that we had and all that. And he felt really bad and he said that I'm really sorry that you have to do that, but this is fantastic. And it's so, it, so even the smallest or the most menial of the job, when you do it in a proper way, in the with the same level of commitment that you would do the most important job also, that matters a lot. So in that context, I wouldn't agree that your articleship experience is not rich. It is, you can bring that up and you can say how you have done it. So it is often in the interview or potentially because you know your articleship is just when you're studying still right when you come into a company that's when you start the real job so when you come into the organization what matters is how you do things and not what you do exactly at many times we have to do certain things are very very manual i mean at whatever level huh? for example i have had to stay till two o'clock three o'clock in the morning just to close books and by closing books as in you know, uh, on the system and it is not something great. Huh? It is just that you have to be there. But you have to be diligent. And that is not something that I find to be. I would like to do presentations to senior management more than to my CFO rather than sit and close books. But there are certain things that we do when we do it with commitment that changes things also. And people do notice that. So put it in that context, Siddhi. Huh? I hope for others also this makes sense. Uh, but irrespective of whatever your articleship experience, you should put whatever courses and certifications that you're doing. It can be something to do with learning digital skills like, you know, Excel, Power Query, Power Pivot, uh, Power BI or any of those tools. And Power BI is for free. You can download the desktop version and start working for free. Uh, Ankit, for some of those things, uh, yes, some companies would ask, have an aptitude test also, would have an aptitude test. Wipro does have an aptitude test. So there are uh, three sections for Wipro's test one is aptitude one is english and one is finance so the weightage is typically given to the finance and certain uh, a slightly lower weightage or pass marks for english and aptitude that is how uh, we go about doing that in webro your finance knowledge is of uh, of most Im biggest importance i have a gap between articleship and to interview i have done part time work based on small firm and tuitions and 
major studies. Um, normally not. Normally not, Rajan. Uh, I have not seen, unless the gap is like three, four years or something like that. It doesn't matter. But even then, it doesn't... Um, uh, for Wipro uh, Limited and Wipro Enterprises, they have some... Uh, they have some number of attempts criteria as long as you meet that it should be fine and the i think wipro enterprise is a marks criteria also so as long as you meet that it should be fine gaps don't matter so much because you're a chartered accountant chartered accountant uh, qualification is a postgraduate qualification so it doesn't matter as much then uh, priya i and mentioned this about feedback if you are not selected uh, typically people don't uh, remember because I may be interviewing many people and they might not have the detail for that but if you want to ask a feedback it is best to ask during the interview itself and many times you can have that feedback also but typically you know if uh, what will happen is that you might be interacting with a particular HR team or a, a finance team that is coordinating the interviews not really the interviewer so they might not have all the details of uh, the feedback for individual candidates for aptitude, you know, it is uh, for Sneha for aptitude. Uh, you can we have some basic maths and stuff like that is fine. Just reasoning and aptitude. So any any of the R S Agarwal kind of books or whatever happens in these competitive exams, that should be very basic stuff. Should be good enough. Uh, see, it is. Uh, Depends on the number of attempts, depends upon the... So in Wipro Enterprises, I think it is two attempts. In Wipro Limited, it is three attempts that they have for clearing. That is something that they have uh, they have put as a criteria. Some companies don't have that number of attempts as a criteria. So uh, this is this might be one of the gating things that are there in that. <coughs> Academic records, the percentage of marks is not... Uh, uh, is not uh, important for all companies. For certain companies, it is. For Wipro Enterprises, they have a 55% cutoff uh, in both groups in CA final, both groups put together, and two attempts in CA final, both groups put together again. Uh, but Wipro Limited, there is no marks cutoff. Wipro Limited has three attempts, I think, and uh, no marks cutoff on intermediate or finals or something. So academic records really doesn't matter much because, you know, of course, if you have a rank or something, it will stand out. But that is just a ticket to the game. Huh? Once the, to enter into the game, after that, you are on your own. Then, you know, it will be based on how you are answering the questions and how you are able to get that. For which you will get into the next stage, preparing the, for the interview. I've, I think I've answered all the questions. If there is anybody who has left out, please put it in the chat window. So preparing for the interview, besides the company and a specific job role that you're applying for, what is the job role that you're, what is it that you're applying for? Reach out to <coughs> people in through LinkedIn who are, uh, who have done, uh, who have been in that company before and all that. Whatever be it, now sound always to be confident, optimistic and enthusiastic. Nobody wants somebody who is, <coughs> how is the way we say in Hindi, thaka hua na? You know, need to be enthusiastic and can do kind of an attitude. Huh? So I'll just this is the beginning part. So here are a few questions that had come in the last sessions that were there. And I thought that I'll just address that. Tell me something about yourself. Uh, I don't know if there are YouTube videos that explain this, but I've just thought of some of the examples that I've come across. Uh, Laiba, I'll come to your question now. Huh? Bamsi, I'll come to your question also. Just give me a minute, I'll come to your question. So, typically, what happens if, when you start the interview, many people ask you, tell me something about yourself or why don't you take me through your resume? Now, this is the best way for you to manipulate the interview in your favor. So, therefore, you have to spend hours preparing for this particular top topic. How are you going to start your introduction and it has to be maximum one minute or not more than one one to two minutes at max if you can make it short it's good but with content so you mention something which is what you have done and uh, what is it that who you are 
what are your ability capabilities where you have demonstrated and again demonstration is very important and what are you passionate about few things that this is one example that i have given here there are few examples also that i have otherwise also put second is showcasing skills so for example somebody asks that you know how do you what kind of certifications or courses can i take so if you are taking up a certain course and this is possible now within one month you can take all these course qualification courses that are there on youtube for free you can mention that also that you have taken study from youtube for free that shows enterprise right and we are all finance guys so we don't like spending money so that's perfect perfectly fine if you learn from youtube and you become an expert that's perfectly fine what is it that you have done specific outcome and what has been the so what is it that you've done what is it what has been the outcome and what is the results that came <coughs> quantified so showcasing your skills in a certain manner <coughs> second can be your wider area of interest so somebody said that you know cooking is a hobby or you know some reading newspaper is a hobby you can mention that you know you are keen on current affairs or certain certain points that you can mention but just be careful when you say that you should have a you should be able to stand up to it so therefore what i would say is that whatever you do here you write down you rehearse and then keep on thinking what you, if you want you can do there's a trick that you can do you can record yourself on the phone or something like that now when you play back your whatever you are recording na whatever your tell me something about yourself ka answer is you will you think like an interviewer and see what kind of questions come in write it down again record improvise record like that if you do it in a few times now you will see that your tell me something about yourself or take me through your resume becomes super solid and very strong you got it now keep whatever you have written down record listen to it think what kind of question should come in write down what you can improve do that again in a loop three or four times or five times or whatever number of times it becomes very strong what you can add on to your normal intro is what is your dedication and determination this is where i'll come back to the point that you mentioned your article ship experience was not rich na but how did you how did you uh, how did you react to that situation why is it important because in a company when i'm hiring a person i might not have always the best gold quality work to give that person sometimes that person will need to do manual job or menial jobs or you know very mundane jobs not menial job mundane jobs how does a person react we would want the person to be with same enthusiasm right so therefore this is again an area where you can show that that though my this is was my what my article ship uh experience has been this is how i approach it and with a positive note everybody likes somebody who is positive again relevance to local business so few examples that i have given in terms of how you can make it relatable or you know what you can make it to uh, uh how you can add on to your sto story and uh make uh, a good opening remark some poor responses are that you know i am a ca fresher looking for a good job but the problem with the statement is that there is no information there i know you are a ca fresher i know you are looking for a good job i know you are is but so there is not active engagement that i can see there whereas somebody who is who has some specific things coming in is much more impressive here the other thing you have to be careful about is being long and rambling so i graduated from this place with a top score and this did this so make sure that it is crisp and it is to the point which has content in it so similarly when you're saying that if you went to a college and you did certain uh, activities that you were uh, you were a part of a particular club instead of putting part of the club mention what you did in that club whether be it volunteering or any activity that you did be specific again the last part is that my article ship wasn't the best didn't get much exposure but i am a quick learner willing to work hard but this quick learner and willing to work hard there is no doubt about that you have to be 
but what i see here is a negativity and that is a problem for a person who reads that so remember nothing prevents you from doing good job whatever be the assignment point us keep it concise tailor your response to a specific situation focus on your strength what i mean by networking event is sometimes you might have a group discussion or some things where you like to introduce yourself in a group so make sure you tailor your response like that focus on what are your strengths and achievements and use storytelling as a positive language our best way to learn storytelling is look at movies how are stories told in a movie and there you will see that how you can make your story very short and crisp and last but not the least is again enthusiasm and de desire to act so these are the few things that that i wanted to speak i'll just take a quick break and go back to the questions which were there so the number of attempts matter only for the first job post that you are on your own yeah exactly so live up uh, the number of attempts typically matter only for the first job after that nobody cares how actually is the uh, company shortlist from a thousands of job applications so what they do is that they'll have a certain criteria of entry criteria that will might be there like i said in crypto enterprises there is a 55% uh, marks in uh, or more 55% or more in both groups put together and two attempts up to two attempts in cfi so this is the criteria that they come up with so they shortlist based on that and then you appear for a written test in wipro limited it is three attempts i think they appear for a written test and after the written test based on the scores that you have you will be shortlisted for the first round of for a uh, first round of interview or a extempore speech and so on so it goes through that process now in the entire process what they follow is that how keen you are on this taking this job they would want to know how keen how, how soon can you join when you are selected or what is the uh, uh, what is the uh, uh, what is the commitment that you show in making sure that you this is the place where you want to join so that is how they evaluate in different pieces apart from the technical of course we will come to the technical part now. yeah yeah absolutely see if you have ideally you should get a message in some time most companies some companies don't do that if the hr round is cleared and uh, the next round of interview took place but and you don't get a response you don't have a problem when I mean, you should not have a problem asking at wipro they def they would get back but sometimes what happens is that uh, there might be a delay in the process for example last time what happened was that there was a closure quarter closure going on now during the quarter closure interviews were skewed in a certain staggered manner so therefore it took time so people might not respond to you immediately it might take a couple of days to respond back or there's a call but you can expect a response definitely from the pro most companies respond back saying what has been your candidature like yeah you should mention that if there are any transfers also it is good to mention which are the firms that you articled in i think that's what you mean okay finish with the questions here so few things on strength and weaknesses is that while talking about your strength avoid generic statements without quali quantifying hard working team work problem solving don't mean anything unless you give examples mention the examples that come in there now weaknesses don't invent weaknesses just for the sake of answering the question now pick up something uh, that you can honestly acknowledge but what you should do is frame it as a challenge say that instead of saying i am bad at he said this is where i am and this is the journey i have started because everybody keeps on improving right so put it in that manner and when you do that highlight how far you have reached what are the efforts that you have taken for example one person asked that i have a problem in english speaking mention that it is a positive thing that this is what i have done after my exams this is what i spent time in and today i have reached from 0 to maybe 5 but that is infinite improvement right 5 minus 0 by 0 is infinite so huge improvement that has happened 
So you mentioned in that manner, what is the effort that you have done and what is the relevance for the particular job industry also? How will the, uh, you know, your working to overcome this weakness will benefit your job? So few examples that I've taken here, one example, one example that I've taken here is a weakness. <coughs> what you do as a, what is the challenge that you are facing and how are you addressing the challenge? What is the progress that you have made and the relevance and the relevance is that I'm, so once you structure it in this manner, no, it becomes impressive. Now, even if you don't speak English, like I said, like uh, Queen's English or, you know, in a fluent manner, it's okay. People look for content and people can improve when given the right opportunity. So I'll pause here and I'll get into it. Just take a quick time check with uh, Deepak sir. And uh, if we can go to the technical questions, answering how to go about what kind of things happen in a technical interview. Yes, yes, Chirag, there is no problem in... Uh, I mean, unless you say that I am uh, addicted to heroin or, you know, I, I mean, which you won't or, you know, I am, a, I uh, go drunk to my bed every day. It is not a problem. I mean, everybody knows that everybody has their own weaknesses. So it is how you articulate it that matters and your determination to overcome it. That is what matters. Uh, Deepak sir, I just wanted to check. Can we, do we have time to go in for the technical questions as well? How to face technical interviews? Yeah, sir, if, uh, the, I think we can take some few minutes or uh, because it's already 7.30. Okay. So, so you I'm can take few uh, one and one I thing which I think one question is appearing is uh, I don't know the name. Somebody has come with name Samsung. Whether we are required to mention all the firm's name and experience if we have transferred from one firm to another. Yes, because they will try to find out the overall hierarchy and the sequence where you have done your articleship. So you need to mention yeah, I mentioned that. Sir. I answered that. We have to, we should mention that. Okay. okay. So I'll quickly take them through typically what happens in an interview. No? See, um, again, writing your resume is paramount. How you, what content you put in is paramount there. If you are saying capital budgeting is your area of interest or financial reporting or SFM is your area of interest or accounting is your area of interest, you should be thorough in that particular topic. Now, they might also ask you which are the areas that you are comfortable, which standard can I ask you questions on? And they might start with a particular standard, an accounting standard. It could be uh, India uh, 115 or India 103 or 109 or whatever. So whichever, whichever area that you're talking about, you should be thorough in that. Typically, most people start with capital budgeting or SFM kind of questions because uh, that is the best way they know how to judge a uh, fresher who is coming in. Now, in the, you have to remember that the first question that you might get might be a very straightforward question. It could be as simple as that. What is it? Can you tell me the difference between IRR and NPV? Which is the better way, better measure to evaluate a project? So, what you should do is that instead of jumping into the answer immediately. Right, give the answer and then also qualify it by saying what can be a good way to look at a good way to value the company and what are the pitfalls that you might see if you are using IRR. And when you're saying IRR, you know already that you know maybe uh, you cannot use IR, IRR in an unconventional cash flow. So then they'll ask you what is an unconventional cash flow. So how do you use NP? So you know it goes into a loop and loop and loop. The idea of the interviewer in these kind of scenarios is that how do you ask questions to figure out what is the depth of the candidate's knowledge not the memorization part so people will not ask you in a particular but if you if you have written that you know you know uh, a particular area or your strength is a particular area then you should uh, mention you should mention that and sometimes it can be tricky also sometimes you know you can get a tricky question that you know, let's say that uh, <clears throat> how do I, how is, how do you calculate uh, CAPM, for example? And you might answer CAPM is calculated by uh, RM minus RF into beta plus whatever. Huh. So, risk free rate of return. But then I'll ask you, what is the meaning of risk free rate of return? RF plus RM minus RF into beta. Then I'll ask you, what is beta? And then go into what is the formula for beta or how do you calculate beta? 
So, or you can say, what is the risk-free rate of return? So, which one would you take? Would you take the bond yield or bond price? You know, some of these questions which you might be able to answer in a normal scenario setup, you might get nervous. So, my tip to all those people who get nervous is that, you know, have a pencil or pencil in hand and a paper in hand and tell the interviewer that it's if it's okay, can I have a paper and pencil next to me? Most people will say yes. Otherwise, have something in hand. What it does is that it gives you confidence. Otherwise, when you don't have anything to hold on to, na, you feel like you are sinking. When you have something to fidget on to, it is, I've seen for many people, it works well. Like you can see, I've dropped my pen. So have something in hand so that you can keep on writing or you don't get your nervousness, a bit of nervousness is transferred there. So think of it. And when you want, when you are stuck with a question, the way you should go, so write down the details that are there and then go into and then try to break down the question and take time to answer. Now, you have to understand also you have about 20 minutes to for the interview. So the key question that people ask is that when do I say that? How many times can I say I don't know? Is it better to say I don't know when you are facing a technical question or is it better to make a guess? I would say that don't make a guess, but you use a different technique called extrapolation. What I mean by that is that you say that you can start by saying, I don't want to guess. I'm not guessing on this, but this is how it should be because of this, this, this reason. What kind of an example can I give there? Let's say we're talking about, uh, 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 let's say there is a, uh, you're raising an invoice from, uh, from a DTA to a GST area. Now, would that be a zero rated supply? If you don't know the answer for that, then this is when you can have a assumption and say that this is why I think this should be the answer. So thereby what you're doing is that you are exposing how your mind works logically instead of memory. Another example I can tell you is that let us say you have under section ATIA, you can claim benefits for uh, infrastructure projects. So let, if I ask a question that, you know, under, uh, let's say there is a company, the LNT is take, has gotten a project from a National Highways uh, Corporation, National Highway Authority of India to build a certain section of a road and a land over bridge, which is there. So the project cost is around uh, uh, five crores or something like that. And they have outsourced the work to a different construction company. So LNT is managing it. They have outsourced the work to <clears throat> a different construction company. Can that construction company claim benefits under ATIA? The outsourced company, let us say ABC Limited, ABC Private Limited is the uh, is the company that LNT has outsourced. It. Can that company claim benefits? Now, you may or may not know the answer to that. But then you use your logic by telling that you are exposing your logic and therefore before the interview, prepare how you will structure your logic also. And therefore, again, keeping a cool mind is very important to have in an interview. Go to an interview thinking that you already lost the interview. That's okay. Gives you a certain level of confidence. And then go in there. That is why many times now when you have underdogs perform the best, when people don't expect people to perform well, that is how in 1983 we won the World Cup in India. Na? So think of it from that point of view. Huh? Now, open-ended questions and close-ended see oh, close-ended questions are very straightforward. What is uh, uh, can you tell me what is NP, uh, IRR? So that's a very close-ended question. Or uh, what is how do you calculate cost of uh, equity? Now, open-ended question is that what is your what is your view on inflation in India? For example, how what are the what are the a view on the rate cuts that will happen that will create uh, views, uh, the rate cuts that will be announced what will uh, what will it do to the inflation in spite of the rate increase the inflation has not eased out what is the reason for that now these are open ended because they don't have one right answer so there again your logic will need to take over from there huh? so uh, but the question the point is that in either of these cases in a in a very close ended question which is one answer, you have to get the right answer. If you don't get the right answer, 
then it's like a it's like a game that you are playing huh? you place the bet you win or lose but if you are if you have a doubt that is when you should extrapolate in a close ended question in an open ended question anyway you can have a conversation with your uh, interviewer but just bear in mind that which is the direction that the interviewer is taking you into huh? now it could be for example in ifrs 15 or uh, indus india is 115 they can ask you about a particular transaction and which might have an embedded uh, let us say uh, embedded uh, variable consideration inside it will you be able to spot it so how do you go about doing that what i would say is that you should write down go through the different whichever area that you are writing in your resume think of you are interviewing a candidate for that role write down as many questions as you want there and keep trying to answer questions and share between your friends you know soon you'll have a question bank which you can use for uh derivatives or sfm definitely people ask derivatives are there you can ask questions on derivatives what are different uh, um, uh, you know option trading strategies that you can follow if you are if you have mentioned that people will ask you if you are not comfortable you can mention mention that for example for a company like wipro they'll not insist on you knowing derivatives or option trading strat strategy what is straddle swangle or a, a how, how do you say butterfly option or whatever butterfly strategy or different strategies might not be uh, you might not be aware of but certain logical uh, answers they might expect from you okay so again one last question that i wanted to ask you that some again chirag about open ended question na no? another example of open ended question can be uh, i can ask you what is a cash cycle of a company huh? so c to c cycle so which is your considering your day sales outstanding dpo dio and all the days payable outstanding and days inventory outstanding so if i say that cash to cash cycle for a company is negative what are your inferences now this is in some way open ended but at the same time there is one correct answer for that or there are two correct answers for that or for example working capital reduction is it good or bad the answer it depends correct so then you have to think and answer there and these are the places where i think at least that you know many candidates would do better if they have the ability to scribble on a piece of paper so those are few of the uh questions that can come in and similarly other things also to test you in terms of your thinking process for example in roce what is the numerator that you will uh, um, why do you use uh, ebit as a numerator why not pat as a numerator why do you use uh, earnings before interest and tax then you will know that roce includes the loan component also which is your long term debt and your equity therefore it has to be interest before interest and tax it is better to do it like that so the way to answer such a question will be that there is no hard and fast rule that you have to use ebit as a numerator for calculating roce that is perfectly fine not to use it also the reason why you may want to use it is because the interest and tax component in uh, is also attributable to your is attributable to your uh, debt part which is your long term debt part which is a part of your anyway a part of your denominator which is your capital employed so you have to think in those terms and then think and answer okay i think i've taken too much time i'm uh, really sorry for overstepping my time as usual i do that every time but i hope the session was useful for you uh, if you have any questions be happy to explain uh, otherwise we will end here So just one question. Yes, Kumar. Uh, sir, basically, I have been chasing Vipro. I, I've been a big fan, and uh, I've been preparing for the interviews of the Vipro. I know that uh, Vipro sometimes start off campus hiring uh, within one or two weeks of the exam results. Yeah. So I have just two questions. The first one: What is the most important thing you see in a candidate uh, in Vipro? it's difficult to answer that so i'll tell you a few things that it's a mix of few things huh, uh, kunal uh, one is uh, 
and it's difficult to assess during an interview so what what typically most people interview as 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 in me or my colleagues also look for is the uh how eager the person is in learning and how thorough is the person in the concepts that he or she understands for example if you have done if you have not done transfer pricing at all na nobody expects you to know transfer pricing transactions to that depth as long as you have a overall knowledge it's fine but if you have done let us say idt or gst you have done then they expect you to have a certain thoroughness in your in your area where you have worked in so that is the first level so which means that it what does it demonstrate it demonstrates that you are uh, not a person who goes over the top and you know uh, not a ceo level person you are somebody who likes to get into detail likes to understand things and all that so that is a demonstration of commitment and passion also so this is what they look at when people say if i want to say we look for passion and demonstration it doesn't mean anything but i just wanted to give you an example of that second is how are you able to show a commitment what are the demonstrations that you have done in your article shape where you have to, and i'm sure you would have done that huh? where you have chased something and showed tenacity to complete certain task because initiatives all of us start na we start a lot of initiatives but few of us complete it the person who is successful is a person who starts the initiative contains it sustains it and you know completes it also so that is also something that they look for so all these things when i put it together right it looks like enthusiasm energy and all that but if i say that it wouldn't make sense but I, that's why i gave examples say so how do you how do we uh, measure that or how do we assess that so technical thoroughness in the area that you have worked in how uh, how much of uh, detail oriented or how much of uh, hard uh, hard work or you know diligence have you put in? hard work is not the right word diligence have you put in to get into the uh, to the uh, in the work and the problem is not often that you have not put in the problem is that you don't bring it out in the resume or in your interview so just keep that in mind kunal na i hope okay, i answered the question yes sir yes and the second one sir So, since yeah. you have been working in Wipro since last twenty-one years, so how was your experience like uh, being in uh, in a company for twenty-one years? You have given like everything to that. We have I, seen in our profession. Uh, I, uh, we have seen in our profession and uh, other professions also that uh, people switch companies more often in two or three years. yeah cool i'll give you a context to that huh? this is important also for others who are there on the call as well see i i am not a chartered accountant huh? i joined mm-hmm. wipro as a software engineer and i spent 22 years there i joined wipro as a software engineer in my role i, I was a programmer i still do coding huh? uh i was a hardcore techie so if you look at so i have publications in telecom domain and a patent in telecom domain and all that. so i'm a hardcore techie in that sense huh? now for a person like me to get an opportunity to move into sales into pre sales into finance into talent development it is i am sure there are many many more people who are i am not sure i know that there were many many more people who were more capable than i was but i got that opportunity and that is something that was that is what i value a lot about a company like where my my experience in wipro so so much so that you know when i was leaving uh, when i told my boss that i'm uh, planning to leave he refused to speak to me he, my cfo who was that he refused to speak to me he said that no no i'm not listening to you and then we i had to explain to him why i wanted to do that and i served a long notice period i had to i mean I, he asked me to stay on for one year now what i get in return is that i have an amazing set of Uh, uh circle of alumni wipro alumni and today when i am on my own running my own consulting firm i don't have to worry about whether i'll have enough work or not i left wipro in 2020 uh my last working day was 30th 31st of march so when covid started and you can imagine what would have happened if somebody started a business during that time but i had no doubt in my mind that if i just made one phone call i could have got any number of opportunities that i wanted in wipro outside wipro also in the extended parts 
of the places where my colleagues are. So when you see a company, whether be it Wipro or Unilever or any company, I'm not saying Wipro, I'm saying any company. When you stay for long, you build very meaningful relationships. And those relationships is what helps you when you grow up and when you are in a certain place. Say initial five years, you will not have a problem with your job. You will get job because there are many opportunities there for chartered accountants and all that. And India is growing. You will have next five to seven years, you will not have any problem at all. The problem starts when you have eight years, nine years, 10 years experience because then you are choosing what job you want to go into. And also the number of jobs are limited there in that area. Now, when you go into 15 years or 20 years, then the number of jobs are even more limited. So there are more candidates and lesser, lesser number of jobs available. And that is a time when you are you need to have a good job and working for a good company, ethical company, all those things in place. And at that time, the time that you have served, the relationship that you have built matters. And that is where, when I joined a software engineer, people used to change jobs every six months or one year. As a software engineer, people used to, and that was the heydays of software engineering. Huh? Everybody used to go to the US and all that. Looking back, I don't regret the decision at all. Staying back in Wipro and doing it. And I got amazing opportunity to work with. And in fact, uh, when I left Wipro and I still take interviews for Wipro, uh, funny, and I interview chartered accountants. My uh, CFO used to say that there is no doubt that you know I'm I'm not taking interviews there. So he's entrusted me with uh, organizing this whole thing, and I I can I can take interviews for even very senior people who have joined in, and he trusts my decision. He used to, I mean now the current CFO also trusts my decision in that manner. There's a lot of trust that builds in oh, when it is done over a period of time. So I think longevity matters. The thing is that you should be in the right company. And that matters a lot because that will, uh, which has ethics in place, which is not fly by night operators or something like that. And they have a solid cash generation strategy. It is not that they are building castles in air and not, uh, I mean, you have to see money, cash coming in. So you should look at those things also while you're selecting a company. I hope Konal, I have answered your question. Also. Yes, Thank yes. You. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, everybody, for the opportunity. Uh, There's one this, last question. Meet has asked. Ben. Yeah, Meet. Yeah. Uh, Two-pager resume have an impact on shortlisting. No, not really. So in Wipro Limited and Wipro Enterprises, what we do is that we give you a template resume, a resume template that you can fill into. You're supposed to fill in and send it in that format. So it becomes easier for the interviewer to see that. But what I'm saying, Meet, is that when you write, no? Make it crisp. Huh? Don't go overboard writing too many things. And if you are running into problems, try to see if you can uh, use AI tools or something like that to make it crisper. But don't just copy paste. Read it again. Huh? Read it again and then do that. I would say that uh, ideally one page resume is the best because people don't have that much time to go through. You know, you're doing these interviews in series. No, that's why. Okay, I think we can call it a wrap, Narenji, now. And I must appreciate all the participants also that they have stayed up till the end of the session and uh, tried to hear you out in complete. I hope you all had a good session, my dear future chartered accountants. And I hope we were able to give you those insights, which uh, usually are not available across the LinkedIn posts and other social media. On behalf of all these candidates and on behalf of our team also, Narenji, a big, big, big thank you to you that you have given out your time and shared these insights. And uh, I will definitely share these uh, presentations with you with your due permission. And if I wanted to seek your permission also in regard to the fact that uh, I have recorded this session, do you allow me to share this session with the candidates? If oh, you sure. want to? Absolutely, sir. So I, uh, you can, I'll send you the PPT shortly after this. No worries. And you can... Forward. Thank you very much, Narenji. Thank you very much. I know these are all kids. They are just uh, budding chartered accountants. But the value of your time, I always appreciate and cherish. And I always learn something while hearing you out. This time it was the chat GPT thing that which you mentioned that they, it can help you understand at that level. I, I was also using it. 
but to this extent i didn't know so it's more of an insight to me also thank you very much for upgrading us on a regular basis sure thank you sir thank you so much everybody thank you very much narayan ji thank you narayan ji we can you can log off and we i'll sure. just close this i'll log off thank you thank you i hope uh, all the students have got the and the candidates have got the right guidance which we wanted to give you all and i hope it is a um, better session to you there's one more session which we'll bring up now which will give you insights on uh, various domains and what are the various opportunities and how do you handle these pre result things so please make sure you keep attending these sessions and bring your friends also to these sessions because we would have expected more students to come i think it's more of a holiday season now therefore there were lesser students but please make sure and share this word with your friends that yes we all are talking sense here and uh, it's adding value to you so this will help you all build a better resume face the interviews in a more better manner if you have any feedbacks please share it on the group so that uh, everybody can understand and appreciate that and thank you very much for being here i am logging off from the session okay the group is uh, i think you chirag don't you don't have this uh, link of our the group so where did you get this invite from yeah the telegram group degree to placements that's the one the telegram group and the whatsapp group which we make for every attempt pass outs the telegram group is degree to placements do you want me to paste the link of the group here just give me a minute then so just give me a minute i'll share the link just give me a minute see here is the link of the whatsapp group which we have and i'll just share the link of uh, telegram also here is the telegram link you can join and share it with your friends also okay chaliye thank you very much we will take it up uh, the next session in the new years in the first week of january thank you very much